Welcome to Capital Dateline Online. I'm with our guest, Jim Saunders, Executive Editor of the News Service of Florida. Hi, Jim. Hey. So we've gone through our first week of the legislative session, and how would you characterize what went on this first week? Well, there's a couple of things, uh, I, observations I kind of take away from it, one of which was that things went pretty peaceably mm -hmm. uh, between the House and the Senate, but also there was a big issue that got thrown into the mix last week that we weren't really expecting, and it's going to be a big issue for the legislature to deal with in the, in the coming week, and that involves the death penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, the United States Supreme Court uh, issued a, a ruling on the first day of the legislative session basically tossing out Florida's uh, death penalty sentencing system, uh, finding that it was unconstitutional. That presents a big issue for the legislature that they're going to have to deal with this year uh, in the next couple months. And it was, uh, everybody knew about the case, but it wasn't something that had been anticipated that necessarily was going to have to be dealt with during this session. So, uh, so that kind of threw a curveball a little bit uh, and stole some of the attention on the first day of session, which you know, the governor gives a state of the state address and the legislature, everybody's happy. But, uh, but it kind of, uh, it kind of uh, hit right in the middle of all that. So uh, that, was, uh, that was sort of, a, 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 you know, a, something I don't think anybody was expecting to happen last week. No, it was a big surprise and a big issue. Do you think that this might affect current inmates, for instance, on death row? Well, the, the, if I can back up for a second, the issue is uh, the challenge to the death penalty system was that Florida put, has essentially, this is layman speak, has put uh, too much uh, power in the hands of judges, judges in sentencing people to death. This is not the conviction of people. Right. I mean, that's, that's, you know, part of the, this is actually the sentencing phase of death penalty cases. And the U.S. Supreme Court said that the that the the Florida's laws, which are pretty unique, had had put too much power with the judges instead of the juries, and that violated the constitutional right to uh, trial by jury. So um, we know this right now. We know this is going to affect any new death penalty cases. The legislature is going to have to deal with it for new cases coming into the pipeline. The big question, as you alluded to, I think is. Uh, how does this affect people who have been on death row and in some cases, in two cases, are under death warrant right now to be executed in the next two months? So um, we're not sure about that at this point. I think the legislature would, and Attorney General Pam Bondi would like to argue that it shouldn't affect, it shouldn't be retroactive. But you can get bet that the attorneys for death row inmates are going to be arguing as many times as they can that yes, it does affect uh, those who are already on death row. We've already seen the first indication of this. There's a, uh, a, an execution that Governor Scott had signed a death warrant for that was sched is scheduled for February 11th. Immediately an appeal was filed based on this U.S. Supreme Court uh, decision to try to, to try to put a stay on that execution to figure out what the ramifications are. And uh, the Supreme Court, Florida Supreme Court, has not issued a stay, but it has set arguments for, I believe it's, it's the first week of February, right. in that case, to try to you know, figure out how it all fits together uh, and hear arguments about it. So, and this guy's been on death row uh, for, I think it's 31 years. I mean, he's been on it mm -hmm. for a long time. It's an old case. So... Um, you know, it, that is a huge question. If, if Florida has to go back and deal with these old cases and apply this U.S. Supreme Court decision to them, it could be, uh, I mean, it could clog up the system for a long time. And Governor Scott has been very aggressive about executing people. Uh, so, you know, it's, at this point, we don't really know what those ramifications are going to be. But, uh, but I think it's one that we really need to watch closely. Well, the ramification is going to be certainly on the Florida legislature, who actually this week got a water policy and a uniquely abled policy. <laughs> unique through, abilities. Unique abilities, yes. right. Um, so it, that's a good start. Yeah, I, I think otherwise uh, everything went as planned during the first week of session. Um, the Senate president, Andy Gardner, has made a priority of uh, what he calls unique abilities mm -hmm. uh, issues, but essentially they're, they're uh, to provide more opportunities to people with developmental disabilities, particularly children. Mm -hmm. um, his son has Down syndrome. This is a really personal issue with him. And the, the 
the legislature came in, the House and Senate had agreed beforehand that they, and they passed two bills that dealt with uh, those issues, one of which is to provide more educational opportunities to people, or children and students with developmental disabilities. The other is to provide more uh, employment opportunities. Uh, those bills flew through both the House and the Senate the first, and sort of in a quid pro quo, they wouldn't necessarily probably put it that way, but uh, the, uh, both chambers also passed a priority of the House Speaker, Steve Crisofulli, who is very uh, engaged in water policy. That's his big priority is to, to have water policy for the state. And so again, they kind of worked this all out beforehand. The House and Senate both passed a water policy bill. Uh, so each presiding officer got what they wanted the first week, which sort of set, at least symbolically, sort of set the tone for them after a very rocky 2015. And Governor Scott has already said, his office has already said that he's going to sign them those bills quickly, get them into law, and then we'll move forward with the rest of the session. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. For more news about Florida politics and government, keep visiting capitaldatelineonline.com and look in our advances section.